What's going on, everybody? I'm Patrick from Powlax, where we create confident coaches because confident coaches create great environments for players. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the writing playbook. So within the writing playbook, we're going to cover a bunch of different things. First, we're going to talk about what exactly is a ride. Then we're going to talk through our objectives of a ride, like what is the mission within that segment of the game. Then we're going to cover how we want each group of players to play within the ride, regardless of which ride we're doing. We're going to show a lot of really great clips in there as well. And then we're going to cover four separate ride, kind of the schematics of how that's actually going to work. And we're going to cover the 3-3 three, three deep zone ride, the two down windshield wiper ride, the goalie ride, and the zero ride. Now, this video is going to be brought to you by Powlax because that's just who we are. And so one of the things that happened last year, I wrote a book for brand new players and parents. So if you know anyone or are someone who is relatively new to the game, I highly recommend it. It's called The Player and Parents Guide to Lacrosse. And here's a little bit about it. Everything I do is geared towards helping kids fall in love with lacrosse. I'm Patrick Chapla, and for the most part, I create training material for lacrosse coaches. But now I've written a must-have guide for men's and women's lacrosse players and parents. It covers everything from the history, field, and flow of play to practical advice about purchasing equipment and choosing the right stick. Clear explanations, helpful pictures, and QR codes that link to instructional videos make learning the essential skills easy. This comprehensive guide has all the tools you need to fall in love with lacrosse and attain success on the field. So that is the Player and Parents Guide to Lacrosse, and if you know someone new to the game, I really hope you pick it up for them or for yourself. So let's dive into the riding playbook. The first thing we have is, what is a ride? In lacrosse, a ride refers to a defensive strategy employed by the offensive players to put pressure on a clearing team. So basically, when the other team has the ball in their defensive end and they're trying to move to their offensive end, our defense in their offensive end is what a ride is called. Now, the purpose is to disrupt the clearing team's attempts to get the ball to their offensive end, and we want to create turnovers. Really, we also just want to get into the defensive zone. So we're going to cover that with our riding objectives. So our first objective, do not give up offensive transition. Make sure we are defending them coming into our offensive zone. We want to make sure that we are protected. Now, there is also a 10-man ride option, which is like a really aggressive ride that has its own separate masterclass video, uh, playbook PDF, all of that. So if you want that, um, just search 10-man ride on palax.com. Now, our second objective is we want to sub our defensive personnel on the field. Now, this can be while we are riding, or it can be once we're into our settled defensive set as kind of the end of our defensive transition. We're going to cover both of those as we move through this video. Finally, we want to pressure the clearing team to make turnovers, right? So we want to force them to throw the longest pass. We want to put players who don't usually handle the ball into situations where they may turn it over. And then we may want to just double the ball. Within that, here is kind of a schematic that would look like that. So basically, as we begin, this is going to be the two down windshield wiper ride. But so we're forcing D2 to make the longest pass to D3. And then as he throws it up to DM2, now we are trying to double in that area. Now, if you're much better at understanding things from paper, you can download the playbook PDF for this video, which has a bunch of diagrams like this, as well as you know written descriptions of exactly what we're talking about at palax.com. There'll probably be a link somewhere here, but basically just go to palax.com, go to the master coach icon, go down to transition and then writing and then the writing playbook will be one of the options. And there you can basically get access to my entire set of playbook PDFs for every single video I've ever made for $5 per month or $50 per year. Now we're going to go into our writing guidelines. Now our writing guidelines are basically what we want each personnel group to do regardless of the ride. Now our first group is going to be our attackmen. Now before I get into these, I just want to give a shout out to John Galloway. He is the one who came up with the majority of these. He did an IMLCA convention uh, a while back. But so the way he put what each group needed to do into three easy words was exactly why I, I apply it now. But so... The first one we have is attack. Now they have face, chase, and toe the line. Now face basically means we want to get into the face of the player who immediately picks up the ball and, and initiates their clear because we want to have time to drop back into our clear. 
The next one is chase, and that basically means if the ball is thrown above them, they need to chase them, and then midfielders are going to try to turn them back so you can create doubles by chasing. The final thing is that they need to toe the line, which means they need to ride all the way to the midline. So much of riding is based on effort, and if players know they just have to ride all the way to the line, they're going to earn back a lot more offensive opportunities if they will do these three things. The final aspect of toe the line for me is they've got to try to fill passing lanes. A lot of this is about zone work, and if they can just be in the way of the other team making passes, it's going to help us out. So here we have a little schematic, and you'll see that we have A2 getting in the face of the goalie, forcing him to throw it out to D2. Now as D2 throws it up to DM1, now A1 and D2. A2 are going to chase DM2 and try to double if a midi can turn him back. And then finally, all three attackmen end up at the midline. Now let's watch some live clips. So the first highlight we have, the goalie picks the ball off. Notice we get in his face right away. And then he throws a pass to the defenseman. And now they are allowed to get into the ride. Next, we have the same game. Notice this player is right in his face. And you might not think it's like too big of a deal to be there, but... As he throws it, throws the ball away, and we turn over. Now, these are some of the best players, you know, in the country. And the idea that these ideas won't work for, like, youth is just not true. Like, this is absolutely going to work for, for youth teams. Just because these are the players executing them doesn't mean that they're not going to work for you. Now, our next highlight has a deep hole pick the ball up. Same idea. Get in his face. Make him turn back. Don't let him throw the ball upfield too quickly because then once they're up and out, they're going to generate transition. Now, our final highlight is chase. And so you'll see that the goalie throws it to a player who is just right upfield here. Now, if a midfielder catches the ball in this area, all of the attackmen can go double that player because they, he's not really their responsibility, but as, if they all were chasing to the midline, they would all be able to play him. So they play him, they turn him back, throws the ball. But so anytime a player above the attackman catches the ball, he has the ability to do it. Now you'll see that the goalie threw that ball away, so that was awesome. But so all because they got in their face, they, they chased, they pulled him back, and you'll notice that all three of the attackmen rode all the way to the midline. We're going to see that a lot more as we move through the other uh, personnel groups. Our next personnel group is midfield. Now their three phrases are deep matchup, turn him, and down the back pipe. Now, deep matchup basically means as they're matching up, they need to stay with the deepest player because... What coaches usually call this is sliding up field, but if they come off the deeper player, it's just an easy pass to the player behind them, which allows them to generate offensive transition. The next one is turn him, which is essentially if a player catches the ball in our offensive half, midfielders want to try to turn them back because as the attackmen are chasing, that's how we're going to create some of our traps. The final one we have is down the back pipe, which basically means whichever side the ball is cleared on to our defensive end once they're over the midline whichever midfielder is on the opposite side of the field need to get down and into the hole or the house or the paint whatever you call you know the dangerous part of our defensive end they need to get in there because if we need to slide rotate help anyone defensively we just need as many bodies there as we possibly can. So now in this schematic, you'll see that the goalie passes the ball to DM1 on our defensive half. And so 1M1 needs to try to turn him. Now you'll see A3 chasing, and that's how we create some traps. Now he gets rid of the ball and throws it up to DM2, but 1M1 had already subbed off the field, right? We got defensive personnel on. Now as the LSM subbed on with 2M1 here, he's got to realize that he's not with the deepest player and he not needs to make sure that he he gets to dm2 as he's carrying the ball in so he needs to match up with the deepest player that he can and so a lot of this has to do with communication players have to communicate exactly who they have they got to point at exactly who they have so that other players on the field know exactly who is covered and who is not now the final one is dm3 who now is getting down the back pipe as dm2 carries the ball in on the right side of the field here now let's watch some live clips in our first clip, we're going to see an attackman toe the line. We're also going to see how we want to think about deep matchups. Now, our riding personnel is pretty, you know, we're not ahead of the play here. But so what you're going to see is this player knows that this is an attackman. And so he has to hustle all the way in to get 
to this player as he moves into the field. Now, you also have players who are subbing off, and we can use that sub box to create you know, an additional 10 yards as we move into our defensive end. But the bottom line is this player has to know that this attackman is not going over and that he needs to match up with the deepest player that he can. And you'll see he definitely hightails it. The attackman does a really good job of slowing up this clearing player. In our next clip, we're going to see why you really got to stay with the deepest man. So as the ball is moved upfield, one of the players in white actually slides upfield right here. So as he's moving to play the ball, he's leaving this player open. Now, they don't score here, but it's a really, really great opportunity. Now, my perspective on how you need to play this is you've got to stay with the deepest man until you get like into the box, dangerous area. Then you need to slow play and slide because in defensive transition, we want to make sure that we limit the decision-making time of the offensive players as much as we possibly can. So you basically hold, 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 and you go right when you know you need to go, when you need to make that impact, because that's going to allow everyone else to have more time on our end to make our decisions, and they are going to have less time. The next one we have is a bit of a trap slash turnum scenario where as these players start riding, you're going to see that this is an attackman, this is a midfielder. As he's chasing and he turns him, he, he pushes him, pushes him out of bounds. That's an absolutely great turnover, great hustle play. Definitely a great part of the idea of like turn him back. Like he didn't turn him back into a midfielder, but he stayed with him long enough to push him out of bounds. Now in our next clip, we're going to see a turnover happen, and this is a midfielder. And this midfielder, he turns him back immediately. And that's really huge because that's going to allow the other players to come in and, and play with him. Now, they end up getting the ball here and the, one of the players makes a weird decision to like shovel shot it and they, they lose the ball again. But either way, the bottom line is if we can prevent them from getting upfield quickly, that's exactly what we want to do. Now, we didn't really cover get down the back pipe here, but we are going to cover it a lot more as we move into the schematics after we cover what the defense and the goalie do. Now, we're going to move to the defensive personnel, and their two words are cover and aware. So the first thing is defensemen have to cover their attackmen while we're playing offense because if the goalie catches the ball and can throw the ball up to an attackman who's waiting at the midline, it's really, really deflating. Like, defensemen have to cover their attackmen even while we are playing offense because that just, you know, th there's no ride there. They just get the free clear. The other thing that defensemen have to do is be aware. As the ball is moving into the defensive zone, they need to be aware. Do we need to rotate? Do we need to slide? Is there an offensive advantage? Are we good on defense? How many guys do we have in the middle? And do we need any help anywhere? From a schematic standpoint, covers pretty easily while we're playing offense. We want to make sure that they're covering their attackmen. And now... The key about being aware is that the goalie is going to help that a lot because what the goalie can do is direct. The goalie is the only player who can see the entire field. And because they can see the entire field, we want him to direct players as they're coming in. Like if Jimmy is playing a player that he shouldn't be and he needs to just get in, that's where he's like, Jimmy, get in the hole, Jimmy, get in the hole. Or if he's bigger, faster, stronger than the kid that caught it, he might be saying, double, 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 like Jimmy, go double. You never really know. But so the fact that the goalie can see the entire field, once he has the understanding of how our rides are going to work, he can then direct them as they're coming in through our defensive transition to make sure that we can get into our settled defense relatively easily. Now we're going to talk about what we would traditionally think of as our kind of riding strategies, and we're going to go through the 3-3 three, three deep zone ride, the two down windshield wiper ride, the goalie ride, and the zero ride. Now we're going to do that through Lacrosse Lab. Now Lacrosse Lab is an excellent platform that allows you to show the digital representations of plays and then share them to your teams. You can also have like a roster where you can analyze your players, things of that nature, but for the most part, I just use it to show these plays. Now, if you don't want to take all of the time it takes to build out all of the plays and schemes and things that you want to do, you can gain access to my playbook, which is called the Palax Digital Playbook for $60 per year for an individual package or as a part of the Palax Gold membership, which is $25 a month or $250 per year, you can gain access to the playbook and then share it to your players. And so one of the cool things about the entire Palax program is we've got videos you can watch for free. You can get playbook PDFs that accompany the videos for $5 per month, and that gives you access to my entire playbook, which is 
tons and tons and tons of resources. Then if your players need to see the digital representations like this, you can do the Palax Digital Playbook. And then finally, we have the master classes for individuals or entire teams where you actually have to test out of the information so you know everyone's on the same page or you at least know you have a really good fundamental grasp of the information. And so what that allows us to do is we get to address every type of learning style with all the different things and you can pick and choose from exactly what you want. But so let's get into the 3-3 deep zone ride. So when we set up our ride, we're going to have two different personnel groups. We're going to have the midfield group, and then we're going to have our attack group. Now, our midfield group is going to set up at or on our defensive end in three zones. So we've got M2 here, the LSM7 here, and then DM here, and they are all in their own zones across the field. Now, the attackmen are going to be in the same sort of formation, but they're going to be on our offensive end because we can only have three players cross. You get that whole idea. Now... The reason why we do this is because a lot of clearing teams are going to have players walk up as the base, so the goalie and the defenseman here are going to walk up. They're not very dangerous. You know, we're just going to kind of let them do their thing because they're going to have to find somebody upfield or, or come upfield at some point. Now, the midfielders or the midfield group for the clearing team is the defenseman and then the three middies. And what they're going to do is they're going to set four players across the midline, creating a six on four with us as the advantage. Now, once we have our six on four advantage, we are going to follow the following rules. Basically, the farther your man is away from the ball, the farther you can be from your man. And we are going to bump across the field as the ball moves. So as the ball is passed from D3 over to D1, everybody's gonna shift and they're gonna move across the field. Now, if the ball goes back, they're gonna move back the other way, but you get the main idea where our two sets of three players who are in zones across the field are going to shift as the ball moves. Now clearly we don't just arrive in that formation. We're going to get into that formation as we are following our rules of face, chase, toe the line, deep matchup, turn him, and get down the back pipe. But so one of the things we haven't touched on at all is how we want to handle substitutions. And the basic idea behind substitutions is we want to match up. And if they sub, we will sub. So you'll see that here we have our offensive midfielder subbing off the field with their LSM. That's pretty much going to happen every time. Now, as they do that, we get our LSM on the field and they get probably one of their two-way middies on the field. But if they don't sub any of their players, we may have to ride with all of our players to not give up that transition. Now, if that happens, we're going to have to go into our basically marrying and subbing through the midline, which we're going to cover a bit later. And we may have to do it with multiple players. Who knows? But the basic idea is substitutions have to become a aspect of your ride because we don't want to just give up transition, and if we really don't, we'll just run the zero ride. But so, as a function of our 3-3 deep zone ride, if they sub, we'll sub, and as they sub on the field, we will put our player on to match them. Now, as they match up, they get on the field, and now we see our 3-3 deep zones, and as they ball moves from side to side, they're moving. Now, one of the things that we see here is as the ball is moved up field to the midfielder here, if it's on our side of the midline, our defensive side, that's when the midfielder can double. Now, what makes this hard is because the midfielders are matched up deep, this doesn't always happen because from a clearing perspective, if we want more space, we want to push two of our midfielders over and then we're going to try to use our alphas, which is what you're going to see next. If they send the defenseman over and our attackman, we don't want him to cross, then everyone's going to have to bump and that's what, where we call this an alpha. And so what they'll basically do is They'll have this midfielder go over while this defenseman is back, and then they'll bring the midfielder back and send the defenseman. And what it makes these three players do is bump across the field. So they bump across the field. Now, if we reset it to a second ago, now we're going to talk about something called matching feet. Now, matching feet is when a riding team makes sure that every player who is matched up on a clearing player is going to stay on the same side of the field as that player so we can maintain our onsides. And so when we look at it from the lacrosse lab perspective, if the midfielder we have here who is riding their midfielder stays onsides, we can send our attackman over even though they're an attackman. And so that's where we get the match feed idea. Now, that's going to be a lot more valuable in our goalie ride, but it's better to just teach it now before we get into it. So now, 
as they hit the alpha and they bring it into their offensive end, we need to make sure we get down the back pipe. And that's the basics of how the 3-3 deep zone ride works. That We want to get in the face of the player who gets the ball, but we're not going to put much pressure on the base of the clear after that. We're basically going to make sure they don't throw it upfield early and then drop into our zones, make sure we're shifting. If we double, we can. But so now let's watch some of that on live. Here, we see our 3-3 deep zone ride. We've got our 1-2 three attackmen and then we have our one two three midfielders now as the ball moves they're going to shift i think they get an alpha look right here throws it up over now notice bump 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 and he's got to get in and down towards the back pipe now his guy subs he actually subs too which we're going to cover in a little bit but that's the the main outline of the three three deep zone ride now here we see why getting in those passing lanes is so important. He picks the ball off, they get in, they get in some, some good offensive transition. Now the next one we have is how we want to get down the back pipe. The ball is passed up, and we see that we get our midfielder in down the back pipe to make sure that we're not giving up any type of transition. Now the 3-3 deep zone ride is a very, very safe ride. We may not always want to ride with that safe, and if we want to put a little bit of pressure on them, what we are going to do is we're going to run the two down windshield wiper ride. So in our two down windshield wiper ride, basically we're going to be doing many of the exact same things. Our midfield group is going to do the exact same thing. Deep matchup, turn them back if you can, and then get down the back pipe if, if they actually clear the ball. But for our attackmen, instead of having them just get to just in front of the midline and you know make sure that they're not letting passes through, we're going to have two of them guard the base of the clear as they try to move it upfield. So you'll see here, as A3 and A2 are playing the base of the clear, they are going to force them to make the, the longest pass across the field while the midfield group sets up. And so basically here we see the entire idea. We've got our midfield group that is three across where they can bump to either side. And then we have the two attackmen who are down putting pressure on the goalie and the defenseman. And that can work really well because goalies and defensemen, they don't always carry the ball very much. Now, one player I want to highlight is the attackman that is not guarding the base of their clear. When the ball is away, he can obviously slough off his defenseman, but a lot of teams will put a defenseman on the off box side because it's easy. It keeps defensive players on the field. Now that won't always happen. If a team is using the two, three, two clear or another style of substitutions, they may have two poles sub off. Now, regardless of where that happens, usually we want to make sure that this attackman is making sure no one's getting up the off box side because the majority of people are going to the box side to sub or, you know, just get your personnel on. So now within our two down windshield wiper ride, that's pretty much it, right? Our midfielders are matching up. We have got two attackmen who are playing the three players in the base. And now as they move up field, we are making sure that we are putting pressure on the defense and goalie as they are moving up field. Now, all the other stuff stays the same. If they throw the ball to a midfielder and we can chase to create double teams, we absolutely should. If they throw it to an alpha, we need to make sure that we are bumping across the field, getting down the back pipe, and getting in to play our defensive sets. So now watching it in action, here Cornell gives the ball to a shorty, which this is called the shorty low clear. If a short stick ever gets the ball in this area, just all the attackmen can ride to them because it's not they're not really their responsibility, right? One of the midfielders needs to match up with this player way down the line. But so having all the attackmen come and kind of swarm him, they knock the ball down, turn it over, he ends up throwing the ball upfield, and it becomes a turnover. Now in our second one, you're just going to notice how the attackman is really good to get in their face, how this attackman goes to ride on the other side. They get the ball up to the midfielder pretty easy, but we do get in defensively, we match up deep, and we don't give up any transition. Now the idea between picking between the 3-3 deep zone ride and the 2-down windshield wiper ride is basically on whether you think the additional pressure from your two attackmen on their goalie and defenseman will give you more turnovers. And if you think they will, run the 2-down windshield wiper ride. If you think that you've got a better opportunity of clogging up the middle of the field, run the 3-3 deep zone ride. Now we're going to go through two additional really cool rides that are the goalie ride which is essentially locking off everybody except for the goalie and the zero ride which is we don't even care about giving pressure we just want to get into defense and play settled defense so in the goalie ride 
we are going to lock off everybody but the goalie. Now, I mentioned this as we were going through, I think, the 3-3 deep zone ride. But if we are locking off everyone, we have to match feet. So as the defenseman crosses here, the attackman has to go with them so we don't give up a really easy alpha look. Now, as the goalie crosses the midline, we've got a couple different ways we can play this. The first is we can try to jump him right away if we can surprise him coming off one of these midfield players, or we can slow play it and have our other midfielder who was defending somebody else try to get in to play him. Now, one thing I will say is I have seen the majority of goalie goals I've seen have been from this ride, because as everyone thinks they're locked off, if the goalie is quick about it, he can absolutely just run in and shoot because no one is, is trying to guard him. But so... How you decide to play him as he carries the ball over to not get a um, procedure call, that's kind of on you. And mainly within the goalie ride, we just want to make sure that we are putting it in the hands of a goalie that's not very good, right? So as this goalie is coming up field, these aren't even really goalie rides. It's just showing you that a lot of times the goalie will just throw the ball away. Not a lot of times, but sometimes the goalie will throw the ball away. And with new goalies or goalies who aren't very experienced, if we can just get the ball in their hands, just let them turn the ball over. This is the one where we did shorty low again. He throws it back, and then as he throws it back, the goalie's going to throw it away. We're just trying to show that sometimes if you can just keep the ball in the hands of the goalie, they'll turn it over all on their own. Now, the zero ride is one where we don't care about pressure at all. All we care about is getting our defensive personnel on the field. So now we're going to have two ideas. The first is all of the attackmen or all the players who are off box are going to need to cover up the off box side so that they don't have the ability to just clear it up the off box side super really, really fast. And we have the time to sub out. The next is who do we want to substitute? The, the basic and main and most used idea is we want to have our midfield group sub off the field for our defensive personnel. But if there's a midfielder who's like way, way, way across the field, maybe instead of having our midfield group sub off the field, instead we want to have the three closest players to the box sub off the field. But so pretty easy concepts. The basic idea is we would rather not give up transition and play settled defense. And so that's just kind of what that is for. Now, Within this, DU a few years ago, they ran this all the time. They were really good settled defense. They uh, didn't just didn't want to give up any transition. But so you'll see there's no pressure on any of the players here. They get a pretty easy dump over the midline. But you'll notice that all of the defensive personnel is in on the defensive end pretty early in their offensive series. Same basic idea going the other direction. No pressure here. They dump it to a player coming out of the box, turn it back, and you'll see we already have the midfield personnel in on defense here, and they are just ready to play defense. Now, the final part of this video is what do we do if one of our offensive personnel gets stuck on the defensive end? And the answer is they're going to play defense or they're going to try to sub off with one of their defensive players who is subbing off of the field. And so in this example... M here is our offensive personnel, and D here is their defensive personnel. Now, what they're going to do, or what he's going to do, is he's going to marry. And by marry, we mean to go with, right? He's going to lock off on that player, and if he subs, they both sub, right? And so if they sub through the box, we're going to sub through the box. But a lot of teams now are subbing through the midline, and so we're going to go over the ideas of subbing through the midline now. So in order to sub through the midline, the first thing we have to do is we have to sub an attackman off for our defensive personnel that we want to get on the field. Now, once he's off the field and we get our defensive personnel on, now we are going to sub our offensive personnel over the midline so that our defensive personnel can then go into the defensive zone. Once he's over the midline, our offensive personnel, he's now going to get off the field so our attackmen can go back on. But so it's three basic subs. We have the attackman for the defensive midfielder, the defensive midfielder for the offensive midfielder, and then the offensive midfielder back for the attackman. Now, within a lot of rides, you can just do this naturally where one attackman just knows he's coming off and then the middies have to count and have to know exactly how many players are over so we don't end up off sides. Now let's watch some film on exactly what this looks like. So here we get a nice deep alpha he catches the ball. Now you'll notice this is one of their defensive personnel 
and two is going to run right with him. Now, I think two is going through the midline because he could. They might have both gone through the midline, but either way, you'll notice that they go together. Next, we have the same basic idea with these two players. As 90 runs off the field, so does this player. Now, this is a race, right? If they can generate offensive transition by subbing faster, they absolutely will, and that does happen some of the time. Same idea here. These two are running. He goes to the box. This player goes to the midline. Basic idea is we don't want to give up defensive transition. Now, our final one is really cool. What some teams have began doing is they will basically set a pick so that the offensive personnel on the defensive end has to try to switch, and then they will run off the field. So this is their pull. And the white player is the offensive player who needs to get in, get off the field, basically, right? So, right here, you'll see that this defenseman is bringing a pick to the ball, which is going to make this player have to read whether or not he's going to have to switch, which is going to give the defenseman a jump to get over the midline, right? So, as they come off the pick, he doesn't actually show at all. He just goes right with him, which... Whether the offensive player ran him off the pick really well is could be you know looked at later, but you will see they have to slide from the inside really quickly. They throw back one, two, and they get a really great shot opportunity. But so be aware if you are trying to get your offensive personnel off the field by marrying, if that player does pick, like right here, if this pick is set really well and this player is is in a defensive strategy where we don't have the slide here, we rather have the pick, he may get beat going off the field, or he may just have to stay in and play defense. But so, that is the writing playbook. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section. If you want to gain access to the playbook PDF that accompanies this and all the other videos, you can get that at powlax.com. Also, make sure to check out uh, Lacrosse Lab and the Powlax Digital Playbook for yourself or for your team. Just make sure to check out the Player and Parents Guide to Lacrosse. If you or someone you know is new to lacrosse, it is an absolutely amazing resource. And finally, if you want to save time and effort trying to install this, check out the Palax Masterclass with the writing playbook. That way you send this out to all the players. Players have to test out, and then when they arrive at practice, they're already going to have a decent understanding of exactly what they're going to need to do. Now, make sure to follow on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all the socials. Have a good one. I will see you in the next video.